Look, friends, uh, Nepal is devastated right now. Uh, on an hour, some way, we are trying to assess the situation and to see how help can be offered through reliable sources. We do have Prem Gurgain, non-resident Nepali uh, computer engineer by profession living in Los Angeles. He's been promoting uh, Nepal as land of Mount Everest and birthplace of Lord Buddha. Fascinating. Also actively now uh, for working on building uh, Pasupatina Temple and Buddha Stupa at Narwak, Los Angeles. Also we have Bash Bisu, uh, graduate from Cal State Los Angeles University, a young social worker who lives in Narwak, and now supporting families in Nepal to connect with their loved ones in U.S. and worldwide. He's on ground in Nepal right now to talk to us. Uh, we do have Suresh Ediga as well, joining from, uh, from uh, New Jersey. Um, works in a financial company and has been a fascinating social activist, worked on multiple causes, has been on an array some earlier as well. Prem Bisu and uh, Suri, thanks for joining the call real quick, sir. Thank you. Thanks again for the opportunity. Sure, it's our pleasure. First of all, let me go to Bisu. On ground, Bisu, we know, uh, know from the reliable sources that more than 1,000 people lost their lives and the count is increasing. Uh, it, it's heartbreaking to even imagine. What sort of help people on ground are looking out for, Bisu? Yeah, at the moment, you know, people are looking for the health, like, you know, unpaid up the medicines, you know, Medicare, because uh, many people have been, you know, many people died in the hospital, and there is no rooms or what do you call, you know, in the in the hospital, and people are being being taken up outside, you know, on the outdoor in the hospital. So at the moment, like, you know, medicines and, like, you know, whatever, like, it's important for at the moment. When we say medicines, Bisu, uh, are there any, you know, uh, over-the-counter kind of medicines that can be uh, sent through any uh, reliable sources? When we say medicines, what are some of the common medicines that people are looking out for, uh, you know, when, when these sort of... I mean, like, you know, uh, yeah, the reason is that because this is not, not any kind of, like, what do you call... Uh, any kind of flu, but this is kind of accident, right? You know, it's a, what do you call, major earthquake. So at the moment, people are being, what do you call, uh, struck by, like, all these bricks and debris from the fallen, fallen buildings and the, and the monuments, all the temples and everything. So many people, like, uh, they are not having a bed inside the hospital, so they are being treated, treated outside the hospital. Hmm, okay. And, uh, Bisu, uh uh, on ground, what sort of help is pouring in right now? And how can people connect to all these reliable agencies, charities, or NGOs to broaden up relief efforts? Do you have any information on that? Oh, at the moment, because, you know, uh, the, the quake happened this afternoon today, right? And right now it's midnight in Nepal, right now. It's already like 12.30 right now. And at the moment, right, so the help hasn't been arrived. But... There are so many people who have been buried inside, inside the debris. So those people haven't been taken into consideration due to lack of information and due to lack of resources. So we have to gather as many as people and try to find out if there are some living people buried inside those debris. And also at the same moment, right, since because Spring is in Los Angeles and I, I'm also, I also reside in Los Angeles, so I, have, I don't have any idea at the moment who who might be the reliable organization, but like, you know, I could be, you know, I and on based on Prem Guru Heights, you know, we have possible the foundation in Los Angeles, we could be a reliable source so we can hand over the, uh, the resources to the victims. Bisu, where are you right now? And uh, imagining that few of our friends, uh, you know, uh, get together real quick and try to send something, where are you right now, and how do you uh, essentially ensure that this, this help can be uh, transferred as soon as possible, Bisu? All oh, right, it's like two hours, two hours away from Kathmandu Valley, because only today, you know, I just went to, uh, I was planning to, do, I was planning, planning to go to visit the temple, known as Manakamana, like two hours drive from Kathmandu Valley, and that Manakamana temple is located in the Gorkha, it's next to Lamjun where the epicenter of the earthquake happened today. So I'm just like two hours away from Kathmandu. Okay. And uh, this, uh, at this point in time, communication is broken. Uh, there's no information uh, that's available. What comes to your mind that somebody sitting outside Nepal uh, can, can offer help? I'm just looking out for some 
something that comes to your mind, which people sitting outside can do and then help, like, you know, searching for people's information and passing it on, whatever ways that you are seeing, you know, on the ground, when you look at, you'll be seeing that, oh, this is something that somebody can help from outside. Do you, do you get something of those thoughts? Yeah, at the moment, you know, because uh, that's a secondary step, because maybe at the moment, the, the first concern is about, like, you know, what do you call it? taking care of those big things, like, you know, many people have been transferred to hospitals, and I even read the news, like, more than 500 people died in the hospital. And so there are still, like, so many big things, you know. If they can be cured right away, so they can, they can be saved. So those are the many, those are the most important things that we need to do at the moment. Got it. And, generally- and also at the same time, as we're talking about communication, right, as we're talking about communication, yeah, I can be read some Viber on my cell phone or my Facebook. And at the same time, right, I have been like the main contact person of the people of, of America, right? All the people living in the USA, they are contacting me, you know, in order to contact their family members here in Nepal. Because at the moment, the phone lines are being like busy, you know, the phone lines are being not working. So, you know, all the people are, calling, all the people are contacting me. So, and, I, and also at the same time, I'm contacting on their family members and I'm passing the information to them. So, you know, I'm acting as a middle person at the moment to provide the information or the status of the family members. I can imagine because Prem and me, uh, me were trying to reach out to you and it's been t- tough to get your line. Uh, I can certainly understand. Yeah. So, uh, Bisu, uh, just to understand, how long you'll be there in that, in that place in Nepal uh, f- from now on? I'll be at least for next two or three weeks. At least for two weeks, two weeks, otherwise for three weeks. In the three weeks. And Bisu, it will be a great help if you can culminate all the information of, uh, of how somebody can, uh, can g- really help uh, in whatever way possible because your two weeks are, is very valuable. And if there is any way that uh, we can reach out yes. and offer some help. That would be interesting to, uh, to see as well. Um, journalists and media agencies uh, covering this natural disaster, they do a great service uh, in, in covering and conveying messages. Uh, did you come across any reliable media sources or journalists uh, whom we can reach out to for information? Uh, uh, sir? Yeah, uh, I, think, I think at the moment, you know, all the state level, state level journalists or state level television, yeah, they are pretty reliable at the moment. Because at the moment, right, there is no, you know, in many places, the power is being shut down. There is no communications. So we are just like, you know, trusting the national level media. So they are pretty trust, trustful at the moment. So we can trust them pretty much. And also in the same case, you know, as I mentioned to Prem earlier, you know, I'll have much more information tomorrow. Like, you know, so I can provide you much more reliable sources tomorrow, you know. Sure. We'll touch base with you on this uh, tomorrow as well, Bisu. Uh, uh, just, just out of curiosity, any specific uh, uh, relief efforts targeting uh, children and kids that you came across on ground? Oh, at the moment, you know, I haven't heard anything because, you know, this thing happened at the midday, right? Right. And at the same time, because, you know, there, are, there have been like, you know, more than 15 or 16 after shock. You know, and many people are, many people tonight are living outside their houses in the open area. Okay. Because in Cassidy Valley, I've been getting several phone calls from all my friends and families. They are not, they are not living, they are not staying inside the house tonight. They are all outside in the open space. Because, you know, they are like, I think maybe 15 or 16 after socks. Right, right. I can imagine. And Bisu, uh, let's come... uh, yeah. Let me come to Prem here. Prem, sir, you've been a non-resident Nepali living in Los Angeles for almost a couple of decades, if I'm right. And uh, I, I remember you doing a lot of good activities, you know, hosted Pushpa Besnet, Anuradha Koirala here in Los Angeles, and you've been a very active community supporter here. So what sort of support activities, you know, I know you're sitting remotely here, but what sort of support activities are you all planning for? How can others join you? Okay. The First of all, thank you so much, Rikant, for your NRI Summer Radio. And... Uh, Thank you, Bishop from Nepal. He's giving me all the information there. Right now, it's like uh, from uh, the moment I heard this news around like uh, 1 o'clock in the morning, in our time, I have passing out the information through like a Twitter, through the Facebook, through the phone calls, you know, whatever way possible. Now, people like uh, Bishop said, 
people like they are in a shock mode. They don't know what's going on. They have no idea how many people died, how many people are buried under the ground, you know, who's there, who's not there, where are the family members. So right now, the most important thing is to find out what are the damages and there are any way possible they can pull out those people from the debris, number one thing. When that happens, like Abhishek said, people are outside right now. They are afraid to go inside the house because it might have the shock again. Like he said 15, 16 after shock, and people are afraid that some building might fall on them. So right now, the immediate relief, what we need is to find out the, the family members who are lost or who are not there. Collect the data, how many people are missing right now from all over the country, because it's not just in Kathmandu, it's in Gorkha, it's in Lamjung, it's in various other parts. Outside the Kathmandu Valley also, a lot of people are affected. And there are 4 million people living in Kathmandu in a very crowded area, old homes. You know, a lot of homes fell down. The, one of the monuments, you know, we call Dharahara, the one of the tallest you know, monuments that fell down into pieces. We don't know how many people are inside that. So it's like, a, and the, there's one international airport, Tribune International Airport, nothing can be landed there. That is shut down. So even there are a lot of help they wanted to get from outside, it's impossible, almost impossible to land the help in there. So right now, whatever we are doing, and I was very happy, I mean, uh, I was very shocked and excited also that a lot of young people, the youth are, like, they are awakened, you know, all over the country, all over different places. I saw the young people carrying people to the hospital, trying to get some bandage, you know, trying to do some kind of relief there. So right now, the immediate help is to find out the losses, and even if somebody is underneath there, to get them out and at least make sure that they are alive whatever many people we can bring back from the debris. That's the first thing. There's some water problems. You know, people don't have water. And a lot of kids are there. I saw, you know, how they carry from the place in a lot of dead kids, and younger people, older people, you know. And there's no, it's, it's like, it looks like a total chaos right now. And uh, you know, the government has to get into it. Government has to, you know, find the reality. And the army is there, the army helicopters, the police, a lot of things are there. But it happened in the afternoon. It's a night time. So a lot of places even they want to reach, it's almost impossible to reach right now. And uh, Prem, I just wanted to ask you, you mentioned about uh, a lot of information dissemination happening on the Twitter and Facebook and other social media. Do you have any Twitter handles that, that uh, we can... Uh, yes, we can uh, uh, half, half Nepal and half uh, Earthquake Nepal, those are the two popular ones right now. Half, NEPA, half Nepal? And the one, uh, yeah. you use that what's the other one? What's the other one? Another one is the Has Earthquake Nepal. Earthquake Nepal. E E A R T S Q A K N E P A L. Got it. Prem, I wanted to understand what sort of community support in, in Los Angeles. Let's talk a little bit about Los Angeles here. Of course, across the country, there might be multiple uh, people who are working on this effort. But I just want to understand what's the total number of population of Nepalis who live in Los Angeles here? We have over over five over five to ten thousand Nepalese who live in Southern California. When I say Los Angeles, it is a valley also, Riverside, San Diego, all different counties. And uh, we have we just bought a uh, couple of years ago. We bought a church. We converted that into temple in the Buddha Stupa right here in Norwalk. That uh, our own Nepalese community they raised one over one million dollar. We bought the land. We bought the property. In fact, today was the day. Today was the opening day. Today we had some like uh, Bastu Puja and Griya Pravesh. Today, today was the day and the Shatsang and Bhajan, everything. We, we fixed today's date for the opening, but uh, this thing happened. So, so the Pashupadinath Foundation is uh, you know, one of the active organizations here. We have other different organizations. We have the ANA, we have the NRN, just like how you have NRI. We have the non-resident Nepalese organization. So there are many organizations. They are all, they're all willing to come forward and do whatever they can do to help out our people back home in Nepal right now. Got it. And uh, let, let me come back to Bisu here. Bisu, uh, Nepal's National Emergency Operations Center, uh, which has been very active. Uh, so we've got any numbers, any information that you want to share with, uh, with all the listeners? Uh, anything that you feel that is important? Yeah. yeah at the moment, you know, like uh, till, till afternoon, like 4 p.m., like there were like 675 people have been like have been like you know lost their life, but till now you know till 11 at 11 p.m. news, there are more than 1,000 people who have lost their lives. Got it. And the, and the toll has been like you know increasing. So like somewhere like there might be like somewhere on like 1,500 to 2,000 people 
that might have lost a life. So that numbers that might come tomorrow morning because right now it's evening, it's night. So and many people have been buried under those debris and everything has been like what do you call? You know all these Nepal police and Nepal armies. They have been deployed to many areas to find any any victims that could survive. You know of that earthquake. Got it. Got it. And uh, I've been seeing Red Cross and CNN and other uh, forums. If there is any way uh, they're looking out for, you know, there's any streamlined way of funding. I don't find anything at this point in time. We do have Suresh who joined from New Jersey as well. Suri, I just wanted to understand, you worked on multiple uh, initiatives earlier, and also you tried desperately to send, you know, some sort of uh, material to Kashmir, which was re- recently ravaged with all these floods and other things. So, Suri, what, what, what comes to your mind when you listen about this, uh, uh, this incident of Nepal being devastated? You know, I think, uh, you know, what Vishu and, uh, you know, um, he, he's doing is incredible uh, at the, on the ground and connecting from here. At the moment, though, there is a um, lot of, um, you know, uh, the situation is still very, very unstable, right? A lot of information still has to be dug out. Um, and once the ground reality is assessed, which might take maybe two days, three days, or maybe a week, uh, I think that's when more and more help uh, will start to come in. And the need at that point will be to how to streamline this help so that uh, you know it reaches to the people in the most effective manner possible. So uh, given that we already have contacts in Nepal, and also uh, this uh, community itself in Los Angeles, what we can try and do is start gathering all that information at one place. For example, if I were to know what are the different uh, NGO organizations that are working on the ground, who are the different volunteers, along with the contact information, so we put it on, on this website. Uh, or let's say this particular area near Kathmandu needs uh, this relief material. You know, this, this, this is the information, or this hospital needs this information, or you know, these are the number of beds that we need. So this is all the information that either we have to scan through Twitter or through uh, you know, social media and try to uh, validate all this information through the uh, sources on the ground and then make sure that all that information is constantly updated uh, on this uh, single point uh, website and that way we can, uh, you know, be uh, effective in how this uh, help can be uh, streamlined. Perfect. Uh, as we speak, uh, Suri, great suggestion, as you mentioned, culmination and, uh, uh, and also gathering information, sharing in, uh, resources. All of this is very, very important. I just created a group called Help Nepal right away. I just added uh, Prem uh, Gagain and also Suresh and a few other friends that are there in, in, in LA and other regions. So I just created that page. I sent you a request. You can just accept that while we speak. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, perfect. So uh, collective uh, effort certainly helps, and each one can share a pie. Uh, that makes a huge difference. Also, most fascinating thing uh, in our conversation is that we do have Bisu on ground, hoping so that he'll be there for uh, more than a week or a couple of weeks if, if, if everything goes, goes right. So, and also I've collected some information uh, uh, that, that might help the listeners. So Google has already launched a person finder that, that makes it more easier for people to uh, you know, uh, gather some uh, help and information regarding the loved ones. And also an Android app, uh, Person Finder by Google is already live, so anybody can go to their Android phones and then download the Person Finder, especially targeting towards Nepal. And this is a great uh, app. I just have uh, downloaded that as well. Also from uh, yeah. friends in India who was willing to help, uh, BSNL already cut uh, the rates to Nepal by half. So if there is any sort of information that can flow in from India to Nepal, Nepal to India, uh, this, is, this is a great, uh, uh, great thing that happened. BSNL already cut the rates to Nepal by half. And radio has played a bigger role uh, as far as Nepal is concerned. And also in the earthquake studies in Nepal, they've already thought that radio is something shortwave radio, though it's vulnerable and not secure. But still they, they thought in this sort of devastated uh, uh, scenarios, Shortwave radio can help. If there is any sort of shortwave radios that are operating, sending information, look around for that as well, Bisu. And uh, thank yes, you so much. Yes, for all. Shrikant, one, one question I had um, a, a more to, uh, for Bisu. 
Uh, mm-hmm. so would it be would it be possible for mm-hmm. us to connect on a daily basis? You know, whenever it's convenient for you, so that we could uh, you know get uh, more uh, uh, real time updates on the ground, so that any help that we can gather, we can route it properly. Sure. Would that be possible? Yeah, exactly. Serious, yeah. Serious, yeah. Exactly. At the moment, right? I still have my same US number. You can call me directly as a regular number from US. So I can answer my call. Right now, you know, like, uh, what do you call it? She can't get me a call on my US number. So I still have okay. my same US AT&T number. So you can simply dial my number and you can call me or you can text me. Or, you, or I can even give you my Facebook ID, like, or maybe Prem has, you know, if you guys are... Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, let's connect it to the Facebook also. Facebook ID yeah. or my Fiverr number or my Gmail ID. You know, I am, I am available every single time, you know, 24 hours a day. So, uh, okay, Suri, yeah, just... Wonderful. So just to add up to that, I just created Help Nepal group. It's a public group and which Prem is already available. Prem, please do uh, help by adding uh, Bisu and other sources uh, who can be sure. of help here. We'll, we'll start adding our friends as well into this group. And I'll we can expand that. conversations and then uh, make some you know, tangible uh, entities so that we can help our friends uh, back in Nepal. And also, I think Bihar is already hit, uh, Suri, when I'm hearing about Bihar and few more in, in West Bengal as well, as, if I'm right. So we'll just culminate all the information and try to see as much as we can help. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And Suri, any other inputs, Prem, uh, Bisu? Am I missing something in this conversation, sir, that you want to put no, forth? This is great. This is what you are doing is uh, absolutely um, awesome. Not from, uh, from my side, right? Now, as you ma- Go ahead. Hello? Go ahead, Prem. Yes, sir. Bisu was saying something. Yes, you had something. Oh, no, Bishu. What I was thinking about Srikant, yes. Yes, Srikant, yeah. Srikant, yeah. I think like either Srikant or either Suresh mentioned earlier, right? Like what could be the reliable NGO sources? Yeah, I think Prem can filter, you know, the most reliable sources and Prem can let us know, you know, for me and you know, for you all. And so we can like, you know, what do you call, work, work with that particular NGO sources. So that, that way, you know, we can just, we can just, Take this forward. Great contact. We only want to, yeah. Sure, yeah I, do that. I think like whatever I can know or whatever I can do, Prem can do easily too. So Prem will let us know. So, you know, Prem can find out. Definitely. Perfect. I have, I have all the contacts. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah the the only thing, sources, yeah. Sure, Bishu. That will be, that'll be great. And I think, uh, you know, Prem would definitely be a very valuable resource, uh, uh, you know. Uh, so, Maybe uh, Srikant, that uh, one other way, uh, we start gathering the local information as well uh, with Prem's help and uh, you know, know exactly uh, how to route this information and to which organization. Wonderful. All right, perfect. Thank you so much. Thanks, Suri. Thanks, Prem. Thanks, Bisu. Bisu on ground, be safe, and we hope everything will be okay. And uh, uh, heartfelt... Uh, you just think if you call any time and my kid, uh, and my kid still, you know, I can you know, answer the call or text me, you know, anything. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you, boy. Thanks, sir.